Thanks for staying with us now. Nigeria's tourism and green energy industry are in the early stages of development with the potential to become major drivers of economic growth and job creation. The country has a diverse range of tourist attractions, including beaches, national parks, cultural attractions, and an, in an abundance of renewable energy resources, including solar, wind, hydropower. By transitioning away from fossil fuels, Nigeria can significantly reduce its carbon footprint to meet its goal of net zero emission by 2060 and combat climate change. However, the country's energy mix is still heavily reliant on fossil fuels and the tourism business still lacks any structure. Nonetheless, the government and several private companies are committed to developing um, tourism and renewable energy resources in the country. So today we're asking, what is the future of tourism and green energy in Nigeria? Now, please, let's hear what you have to say. Remember, you can join the conversation. Send us an SMS or WhatsApp to 081-803-4663. Mary, you're the one that traveled recently. Why didn't you go within Nigeria? <laughs> I have to put you on this spot. Mm -hmm. But tell me, what are the tourist attractions that you've visited in Nigeria, or tourist destinations or whatever? Do you have any? What question? Ah, ah. <laughs> Serious question. Maybe. Question. Don't shame us in this country. I've been to the beach now. The beach at the... Uh, <laughs> good beach. Uh, the good beach. Okay, that's, that's, that's a tourist attraction. No one else. Nothing else. You've not been to Ilashe? Uh, I've been to Ilashe. Okay. What else? That's, that's about it. You can't go see what um, hot spring of I never did all these um, excursions <laughs> in school, <laughs> which is very sad, actually. Don't oh, worry, well, you're talking to the wrong person. <laughs> Jola, how about you? Please. What are the places you visited? Please, Lagos, hmm. just the beach. You've not been to no, uh, all the places you were calling uh, Bauchi, uh, Yankai. Uh, 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 <laughs> no, but I have been to um, the one in Bauchi. I keep forgetting the name. Hmm. Um, something waterfalls. I've traveled by road yeah. now. That was <laughs> that, that's the thing. The danger, you know, when you're traveling by road is just hmm. even you a know, bit of here. Let me bring you now, I guess. Yeah. I've been to many places, but let me just go brag. Don't worry, don't worry. <laughs> <laughs> Tell I'm us. Enjoying me. Studied economics at Bayero University, Kano, and has taken several courses on strategy and execution, digital transformation, and design thinking from various schools like MIT and University of Cambridge. Banjo has led several transformative growth, tech, and impact-led projects and initiatives that have improved business outcomes. Now, he has held different roles across different industries, ranging from direct marketing and advertising um, to oil and gas downstream and also retail supply and uh, where he was COO and executive director before transitioning to the clean energy sector where he currently functions as the group head renewable energy mobility and tourism at Sterling Bank. At Sterling Bank, Banjo and his team recently spearheaded um, the launch of Nigeria's first charging station for electric vehicles. Can you see that? <laughs> They are focused on creating impact by accelerating mass market access to clean and affordable energy alternatives for power and mobility. And he's joined us gracefully in the studio. Thank you so much for joining us, Banjo. It's good to be here. Thanks for having me. I mean, I'm having fun studying all the good things that is happening with Sterling Bank. So I'm coming to that one later. But um, tourism, renewable energy, right? Um, let me go with tourism first. How promising is the Nigerian terrain when it comes to tourist attractions? Like, can we truly generate revenue? I mean, we took, we took a story that we're laughing about how people set up somewhere just come and go and be viewing the heavens. If you try that here, I don't know, but they say that people will pay for it. But I don't know if it is something that people, um, how, how, how receptive are Nigerians to tourist attractions in Nigeria? And how ready is the market for it? It's, well, um, and I think j just before you introduced me, we, uh, we had a, uh, a little chat just now, and even on this table, it looks like I mean, myself. I'm not. I'm not. A, I'm not a very big traveler. I have to. I have to confess. So I'm sort of with you. Okay. You know on that. Um, I have to say that this very little conversation we had sort of uh, spotlights how much potential there is locally because we don't travel Nigeria. We, we don't go across Nigeria. 
uh, and this is generally speaking, whether it's by design or by by by, by I mean, as a function of the things that happen around us. You you made mention of security. Yeah, by default. Example. Yeah, people just don't want. Exactly, to. exactly. And then there's something that's also very instructive. Once once we speak about tourism locally, what people what, what generally comes to people's minds is outward movement, right? If you go to the West, uh, in contrast, when you speak tourism, their mindset is inward movement of people, right? So we've been so conditioned over, over the years to think tourism is about us going out there. In fact, it's something to be proud of. It's good to travel, Summer. it's good to see, you know, the world. Mm. But if you meet, meet the average, you know, Westerner, they, they, they sort of know more about your countries than they do other, other places on the average compared to us. Whereas our mindset is, you know, we all need to travel, we need to travel and all of that. So I, I think that therein lies the opportunity. Um, but there's also a lot of work to do for tourism practitioners as well as the government as well. Uh, and I think the government of the day has sort of set the tone. Uh, to say, you know what, to recognize that tourism can be a huge earner, net earner for the, for, for the country. And so let's dedicate a, a ministry to tourism to begin to have the right conversations, you know, put in, put in place the right, uh, right, uh, right policies, the right infrastructure, and so on. But we also, as Nigerians, must begin to appreciate what we have. Uh, there's tons of tourist, uh, tourist destinations that we have locally. Even if you don't want to go to Abeokuta, as you said, <laughs> you know, or go all the way to the north, um, you'll be surprised how many how many destinations there are, you know, even in Lagos, mm -hmm. in Lagos. So I, I think it's up to us now to um, first for the government who has sort of taken the first step, the bold step, you know, to set up uh, you know a special ministry for tourism, for the practitioners to take advantage of that, you know, have the right conversations with the ministry, have the right policies in place. Hopefully, have have the right infrastructures in place. Also, uh, uh, for financial institutions. So Aha, I was coming there. Yeah, to also support, <laughs> you know, all of these to make sure that uh, the adoption is, is a lot quicker. You guys are doing well. Sorry, ladies, because I was I was just gonna come there that um, I saw I think Ondo State. There's one of your your ladies. She went to see the governor of um, um, that's uh, um, no not Ondo Oshun State, right? But the, the challenge I'm having now is what I see happening is. Um, change of government, right? If one government, look at when Donald Duke was governor and how that um, the festival was yeah. such a big deal. Yes. People used to leave, like you would see people just travel just to go and attend, but I mean, he leaves um, a position of authority and the entire thing, you know, is not as, you know, boisterous as it was when he was there. So the same thing, right? If we're talking about policies like government, because we can't keep waiting for the government of the day. Absolutely. So how can we get to make it like a priority? So regardless of what government comes in, they see that this is actually a money spinner, right? And, you know, they, they pay attention to it. And maybe private sectors, banks, you know, financial institutions invest heavily and maintain those places because, I mean, I think it was Jola that was mentioning about maintainers. Some of these places, when you go there, you can't even really see anything. And they were really, when they, when they launched, they were really very beautiful, but you can't see anything good. I mean, apart from a few places like IIT, I've heard so many good reviews about the place. I hope to visit, you know, maybe this December. But literally, how do we get, um, regardless of the government, let's have a consistency around tourism and tourist attractions in Nigeria. So whoever is government, it doesn't affect, you know, the business. Well, I think there's a huge role for the private sector to play. I have to admit that. Um, I think there's also a big role for the government to play. I don't think it's, it's we're ever going to have a rounded conversation without mentioning the government. And not government in the, in the, in the uh, in, in asking them to invest in the business, no. but government owes to create the enabling environment for business to travel. And that's, that's a general statement. I mean, whoever it is you speak to, whichever industry or sector you talk about, government must create a, an environment that's enabling for people to, to want to invest. Um, uh, safety and security, for example, is one thing that is outside the control of the private sector, right? And you cannot invest and reap uh, you know, um, the dividend of your investment in, a, in, in, in an environment that's, that's unsafe, right? Uh, not to say that, uh, in spite of all of these, uh, we cannot have uh, a, 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 a great uh, tourism sector, right? Like I said, 
uh, even within, say, the, the southwestern region, for those of us that live in Lagos, or within the northern region, for those that live in the north, there are uh, uh, tourism destinations that you can actually visit. Mm -hmm. um, but, but the private sector also has got to invest a bit more. I, I think that's, that, that goes without saying. Um, and, and I think one thing that's very, very instructive to, to note is the fact that there might not have been enough, uh, um, I'm trying to be very careful with how, how I frame this, there might not have been enough um, appropriate funding for the tourism sector, right? And it sort of goes with what happens with uh, in the creative arts sector as well, because the structures are not in place, the, the infrastructure and the system are, are not as developed as you would find in manufacturing, for example, uh, real estate and some of the other sectors. But we have got to find a way as uh, financial institutions, uh, as, as investors, to be able to uh, de-risk, find different frameworks to de-risk uh, businesses that operate within the sector so that we can give them the sort of support mm. they require to thrive. But I, I don't think it's, it's possible for us, for us to have a proper conversation without bringing Without the involving activity. the government. Okay. All right, if you just tuned in, um, we're discussing the future of tourism and energy, green energy in Nigeria, and we have with us Ola Banjo Alimi. Now, please, let's hear what you have to say. Remember, you can join the conversation. Send us an SMS or WhatsApp to 01 Yeah. Okay, so... Um, um, I wanted to ask, I know that you mentioned that um, there is um, like a new establishment, the government is talking right now. So the question is, um, is there any or are there any specific in it, um, initiatives now, you know, concerning that aspect in Nigeria? You know, like the, yes, there's a conversation like we all know, but is there anything particularly that we can look forward to that we can term as progress, you know? For the industry, for tourism, even well, I think it's still very early days for the new government. Oh, the, okay. the ministry is um, just a, a few months old. Mm -hmm. um, we haven't seen. Uh, I mean, of course, so the usual sound bites are there. You know, okay. creates the policies, uh, but they're still very generalistic in nature, mm -hmm. right? So we don't have um, specifics. specifics that point to the specific issues and what what what's going to be done and how okay. it's going to be done. Just yeah, but I'm sure in the coming uh, weeks or months, you know, yeah. we'll hear from the ministry. I'll be very happy to update, um, you know, the viewers on what's, what's going on. Absolutely, we're looking forward to that. Maybe. <laughs> <laughs> okay, um, I just would like you to expand on the advantage of green energy and how important is it for tourism. I know recently they had. Um, a conference, a large um, conference, and I was able to attend, and I saw a lot of um, Asian companies with high focus on energy, green energy, you know, so um, I know that as a country, we're moving into that, and does it have a great impact on tourism, and what would you say about that? Yeah, I, th I think it does, and I think it does have um, uh, an impact on pretty much every facet of life. Mm -hmm. um, power, as you know, affects every sector. It doesn't matter what you do. Um, it, you're just affected by power. If there's no power, your, your standard of living, your livelihood is affected, mm -hmm. right? So um, I, I think that um, power is so, so important, you know, to whatever conversation we're going to have about uh, prosperity and, and you know, um, um, just moving people out of poverty and, and doing things the way things should be done. Um, so in terms of green energy, I think it's gone beyond the buzzword used to be uh, maybe a few years ago. And you see now that it's almost impossible to have a, a conversation at a certain level without talking talking green. Yeah. So and, and beyond the climate importance of having those green conversations, uh, it is also a matter of, um, uh, of efficiency which means that um, I'm paying so and so to so, so amount to uh, you know purchase my PMS or my, my, my diesel. Uh, if I were to adopt a green measure, um, am I going to be better off for it? Mm -hmm. whether, whether in the short short uh, or, or the long term. Right? And it has been established that uh, you know jumping on solar for example is able to give you some savings over over the, the useful life of that asset. The total cost of ownership is actually lower, even though to procure might be expensive. Uh -huh. but 
You are yeah, going to say that. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, now they call me. We are coming. It is. It is uh, important to acknowledge that it's expensive yeah. to procure initially, but over the over four or five years, maybe even longer, you know, you find out that you're actually you're better off, mm -hmm. and because more financial institutions are also getting uh, warmer about having those conversations. Uh, there are now f uh, funds available that tailor to uh, renewable energy that mm. allows you to buy and pay install uh, you know, on installments over yeah. a long period of time. Mm. Okay, so um, I, I, I'm studying something on emerging markets, right, and the business opportunities that are there that lies in this emerging markets, right? And part of the case study that we, we were studying, you know, was um, a hospital. Uh, a doctor in, in India, right? Um, in fact, Harvard used this as a case study as well. Um, they found that quality healthcare, for instance, was a big deal, was very expensive. And, you know, for the population that they had, a lot of them could not um, afford quality healthcare. Um, the study said 2.5 million people needed heart surgery on an annual basis, and they could only meet 3.6% of that number. That's mm -hmm. about 90,000 people. Um, the way it is here in Nigeria, energy is a big deal. Mm -hmm. Like literally, if the, if the government or if, if we're able to solve the energy problem in Nigeria, I feel, in my opinion, and I'm, this is maybe, let me be, let me be conservative, but 70% of small businesses or 70% of just livelihood and everything would just improve. Automatically, I've been off. I've been on solar since maybe 11, 12 years now. In my homes. I just got an office and I reached out to your energy desk. <laughs> I thought I want to do solar. <laughs> Being guy still on my neck because he's sending me hello, ma. How are you? I'm not answering him because the investment, right? I know I need it. In fact, when, when we got the office, I said, we're not going to have a generator here. It has to be a solar system. And mm -hmm. thankfully, um, your bank is doing amazing in the green energy, energy field. Okay. I mean, I saw that your building is completely powered. I see here. Oh, I was really? just calculating the billions. Even with uh, <laughs> this my small 20 kV that I want to do. So, so the point I'm trying to make, in India, what they now did was they developed some kind of mechanism that so um, healthcare is cheap, that no matter how poor you are, you can afford quality healthcare, you understand, at affordable price. So they are pushing the government towards um, um, health insurance policies as opposed to investing in healthcare in itself. Let them invest in health insurance so that private companies can come into that space and blow it up and like literally provide good quality healthcare. So how can we like break down the power the energy problem we have, especially with, when it comes to power in Nigeria. Because right now, if every home is powered, mm -hmm. you know, with green energy and all of that, it solves a major problem, you know. Is this something that is ever going to be possible? And really, these things are not cheap. It's quite expensive. So, I mean, who, if I can afford to spend like 10 million naira on maybe a 20 kVA inverter and solar system and all of that, you know, but how many people can afford that? You know, so how do we start to 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 take power to that level? And it's not the one that some of these solar companies they'll give you one rechargeable lamp and say you can, can power one TV, one fan. No, oh, now but I'm sick. Well, let him answer. <laughs> let me not talk too much. This green energy, I was waiting. <laughs> Well, so I mean, it's a it's a very interesting uh, topic, and I do agree with you. There's no area of human endeavor that you know would survive without without adequate power, and to even to support um, some of what the honest statements you made, close to fifty percent of Nigerians, I think that was about eighty, maybe 90, 90 million, depending on where you get your numbers from, but about 80, 90 million Nigerians have no access to, to power. I'm not saying you know suboptimal access, zero access to power, you know, unconnected to the grid, right? Uh, so it's a huge yes, yes, yes. Um, about 80, maybe 90 percent of businesses in Nigeria are driven by you know small and micro, micro and small scale uh, enterprises. So it also tells you that uh, for us to make a real impact and a real change, we, we must get to that 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 level, you know, and and empower them. And I also side with you that as soon as you provide power to Nigerians, you know, majority of the economic challenges they face would begin to disappear gradually. Um, and 
the way to go about this, in my opinion, is the first, I think the first, very first major move has been made by the government. Uh, in June this year, I think it was, uh, the Electricity Act was, was, was signed, which then which now implies that... Uh, somebody can power Lekki, somebody can power the... Exactly. Uh, you and I can mm -hmm. actually go into, into the that, business. Yeah. Set up, exactly, set up a hub and then power mm -hmm. your know, cluster of households and the, this regulation to back us up. Mm -hmm. Subnational state governments, for example, right now are also able to uh, enact their own energy laws, you know, set their own tariffs, uh, you know, get their own investors and so on. And in fact, uh, transmission companies sort of have uh, an obligation to, to supply a part of their power using renewable energy, which is what obtains uh, out, uh, out, uh, you know, out there in the West. Let me show you. In Scotland, for example, about 97% of their energy is renewable. Can you imagine? Right? Um, we are a long way from that, I, mm. I must admit. But I think that the structures are beginning to form gradually. Um, I think the way to go about this is distributed energy, as you said. Uh, the little 3 kVA system, 2 kVA systems that we can put in the hands of you know, the moms and pop stores and neighborhoods, the barber shops, uh, and so on. You'll be amazed at how much impact it has on the lives of those people. Absolutely. Uh, and they're the ones that, that make up the, the, the you know, employer bracket, Absolutely. the huge employer bracket that we have uh, you know, in the country. So whatever scheme that we have must be able to target and reach out to these people and allow them to uptake the solutions at very very minimal initial cost because that's always what the, what the problem is you know that initial that initial some cost exactly yes. so if you're able to do so at say 10 percent of the cost of the entire solution initially and then allow them two three four years to be able to uh, spread the payments or even you could do power as a service, hmm. which is something that uh, yeah. something that uh, Sterling Bank, uh, I mean, I mean uh, Imperium does currently. You uptake, you don't have to pay anything. You pay, I think, one or one or two months uh, um, energy charge, and then we, you pretty much. Uh, so it should just be like you're, you're paying, yeah, on a exactly. monthly basis, exactly. but just as you pay the uh, on grid, yeah. Then, exactly. So what happens is you just you pay as you use. Uh, it is predictable. It is reliable. Right, uh, and and you know you can certainly be more productive, you know, mm -hmm. uh, doing that. So, um, I think that the the energy policy which has come into being is the first vital step that needed to be uh, taken, and the government has has shown that will, you know, to to to, to change things. It's now uh, up to state governments, you know, private sector to be able to dig deep and see what sort of solutions they can provide that will get to the uh, mm -hmm. you know the bottom of the pyramid. Awesome. So just to touch on quickly, because again, if we're saying we're inviting um, um, private sector, because that's the solution to this problem. Mm -hmm. um, recently, I saw that the owners of Nuvari Mall, and I think they have some malls too in Abuja, they say they want to sell market, uh, they want to go. <laughs> Ah, the, the volatility of our economy, mm -hmm. right? How would this impact, you know, the, this future of this green energy and tourism? Because again, it's not like people are not seeing this business potential. They want to invest their money, but they also want to have guarantee, money back guarantee that, okay, whatever I invest two, three years, you know, I can do projections. And the projections would, you know, even if there will be some variations, it will not be so bad that I cannot even recoup my capital, right? So how, how do we manage? Mm -hmm the volatility of the economy, right, to some of these things, you know, to investors coming in to the to the country? Well, big risks, big big rewards. Um, yeah. Did you just say that? Yes, <laughs> <laughs> Where you find the risks is where you, where you find the reward. But on a, on a more serious note, I think that uh, um, the country, the political and, and, and associated risks that we have within the within not just Nigeria, you know, Africa as a whole, uh, or should I say, developing economies, is is something that affects investor appetite, um, and it's something that's 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 serious enough for any government to sit down and you know want to address. Um, this goes beyond what private sector can do. Um, the government has to make certain moves to sort of assure investors that this is a, the right place to put their put their hard earned cash, right? And again, the government of the day is making some moves that sort of sort of looks like um, you know uh, it's, it's, they're trying to bring back investor confidence, you know, within within the economy. Um, but I think that investors need not be too afraid. And the reason I say so is because it's easy to sit in. Uh, whether it's London or Beijing, and and you know read the news and you know do your analysis and say Nigeria is a huge uh, 
is, is, is a huge risk. And may, maybe so. But the truth is, partnerships make a lot of things work. So there are people who are local, who, are, who are, work within this economy, you and I, that understand you know, the local terrain, the local nuances, who are able to advise, who are able to uh, partner with these people to make sure that the, the cash that's flowing in is invested in the right place. We ensure that there's the right frameworks in place to make sure people don't lose their cash. We ensure that the money's going into the right the right sort of businesses and so on and so forth. For example, I think one thing that we, we're, we've been out for for quite a while is to find uh, appropriate funding for, for green investments. And what I mean by this is, so solar, for example, the solar solution, as you, as you rightly noted the other time, is quite expensive to adopt, mm -hmm. right? If you slap on the commercial rates today within this economy, it becomes it, it doesn't become any easier. It's not any easier to be honest. But if you were to find funding from uh, yeah, developed financial uh, finance institu institutions that come in at single digit or maybe 10, 11 percent, the conversation is different automatically. So rather than pay you 27, 28 percent, I'm going to pay you uh, a 10, 11 percent. So and that benefit is transferred straight to the customer. So rather than them paying this very huge, uh, you know, interest on whatever it is they, they they've taken, it's it's all of a sudden a lot cheaper for them to uptake, you know. So I think generally, yes, the risks exist, but do, do the rewards exist as well? I think absolutely so. And Nigeria, in my opinion, you know, will continue to be, uh, you know, a, a, an economy where people can make the right investments and get get back, um, you know, appropriate dividends. Okay, interesting. Okay, so. Um let me also ask, um, I mean, there's a lot of um, noise about um, solar in terms of renewable energy. Um, are there other options or other alternatives that maybe can provide some lower costs, you know, just for people to be able to access green energy? So you said aside solar. Aside solar. Well, there, there's, a, there's a few other renewable energy sources. Hydro is one of them. Okay. But hydro is... the water lights. <laughs> exactly. So access to the water. And, mm -hmm. and it's not just water. It's water with certain with characteristics. Put, um, certain you know, flow, yeah, exactly. And, and all of that. Mm -hmm. Uh, there's that, but that's not something an individual can readily access. You know, somebody needs to go there, do the investment, and then bring the power to you. There's wind as well. Wind is, whether onshore or offshore, is the initial capital outlay is even more than It's solar. more expensive. And yeah. wind is even best maybe in the northern yeah. region. Yeah. Here, I, I don't it's think we're going to get wind for here. No, but I mean, if you do offshore here. Yeah, yeah offshore yeah. here, yes. It's going to be, it's going to be But it's, it's more expensive. More I, think, I think solar expensive. is the cheapest. Yes. But the, gov the government can um, come in, like for hydro. Mm -hmm. I mean, the issue that we keep having with the dam, I think national grid. I you think know, that is something. Yeah. If they are ready. No, but it's the maintenance. So some so some of these issues that we have that there's a there's a shutdown of the. No, it's actually the, maintenance. Yeah, it's maintenance and it's heavy. Do you understand? I think, in my opinion, really the best solution for us now. And again, solar has so improved. You know, before you couldn't even power things. Mm. No, in their building the elevator, everything is working. I said, I cannot believe that. You know, but. You, but it's, it's quite expensive. And I, I love what you say. I want to bring it back to you people. Because you see, financial institution, I want to see how sincere you people are. <laughs> so when you get these loans, because I know that if you're want if you obtaining loans from like France, you, know, you can get even at 3%. Because my sister was telling me that she wanted to get a loan. They were saying to, she was looking at it. She could not believe it. But you can get these loans. And for financial institutions, right, why are financial institutions not taking those loans maybe at 3% and giving to us like 5%? But if you now want to collect the loan at 3% and not give it to us at 500%. <laughs> so what's the, what's the sincerity of financial institutions who truly want to bring down this interest rate? Because, again, part of what our challenge is mm -hmm. in Nigeria is the fact that we do not have a great credit system. You know, outside the country, I can just wake up and say I want to start a business that is worth 100 million. And there's a financial institution, as long as I have my records and everything, we sign and I move. You people ask me for my mother's kidney, my father's liver, <laughs> you know, 
<laughs> you come to all sides, all kinds. I was, I said to like my friend works in bank of industry, right? For now, and she and her portfolio is about two billion. I said, Auntie, if I give you a collateral that is worth two billion, why did I come to you for the loan in the first place? Mm -hmm. You know. So sometimes I feel like the conditions for even those loans, especially for small, because I'm very passionate about small businesses. For small businesses, I feel like the conditions for these loans are not feasible, mm -hmm. right? If you really want to help businesses, there has to there has to be a way that you give us these loans at really, 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 you know, low um, interest rates and see how we can like grow together. But I don't see that willingness with our financial institutions here. Correct me if I'm wrong. I'll correct you. <laughs> <laughs> well, so um, I think first off, to talk about the DFIs who bring in their cash and you know go to commercial banks through which they funnel the cash to the customer. Uh, typically, there are terms that are signed ab initio. Mm -hmm. So if if someone, if you, for example, and um, you have your cash in euro euros and you wanted to lend to, say, the renewable energy space. And you know, I, I came to you and said, you know what, let's sign, let's sign a deal. I mean, the terms are set out from, from the beginning. Um, and typically, there's transparency in that process. So you would, you would know how much the cash is going to the customer from, yeah. from the start. Right? Um, it's not as straightforward as you painted it, but <laughs> it's, uh, I, I'll tell you, I'll tell you, it's not, it's not that straightforward. Mm -hmm. right? uh, concerning um, having to uh, you know, give, I mean, give customers loans at, at terms that you know, are adoptable, I can't speak for other institutions, but I'll tell you about mine. Right, right now, we're able to give, give you a solar solution, for example, and use the equipment as the collateral. Yes. So you're not required to bring, I mean, and you'll find out soon enough, right? So, maybe, maybe, not so, maybe, so maybe you bring me back here and <laughs> call me out if that's not the case, yeah. right? So we, when Ben gets also eventually, eventually, he will not be asking you for collateral. Mm. But of course, he'll be interested in your credit score. Mm. Right? And there are credit bureaus, of course, that will check to, to check help that, us yeah. know your credit behavior. Mm -hmm. Do you credit, take, take loans and don't pay back? Or yes. do you take and don't pay back and so on and so forth? Right? Of course, we also check your your in and out flow cash, cash flow, to yeah. make sure that you know you can actually pay back. Mm -hmm. you know, subject to some of the regulations put in place by CBN. Mm. Right? Um, once all of that is in place, we're not going to ask you to go and bring anybody's left leg. Trust mm. me. Right? So I, I think that the banks are evolving as well. I can tell you for sure right, my, that Sterling has evolved, evolved you know, understanding that uh, as a community slash impact led business, um, I mean, we're very, we're very in, in, in tune with what's going on in our communities. And so we understand that the people that need the money the most are not the guys that can afford to True. give you a collateral. Yeah, and so we've evolved solutions mm -hmm. that allows us to, you know, lend to them without necessarily asking for some of those funny requirements. Okay, so you're not going to ask me for my mother's kidney and my no. father's liver. <laughs> <laughs> no, you, you, you were saying something about the, not the small lamb stand and whatever. Yeah. And um, there was something MTN did, which... At first, I didn't think it would make a big deal, but I've seen it help my mom in her little business. It might not be able to power that much, but as much as you know, being retired and being able to watch TV and charge your phone when there's it's no still life, something, right? It's still something. Well, you know, see me, yeah, they think they're uncle because yes, yes, charging your phone and all those things cannot bring money to me. No, but there are diff different, different uh, people. Yeah. If you have some places now that you're saying, how I view it and all that. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. Yeah. Actually, to support what you, what you just said, there's actually people who, who actually also make a living from those charges. Yeah. Mm. Mm. So, so, yeah, yeah, yeah. Sure. Most of those people's machines, machines are not on. They don't yeah. believe it. Mm. Okay. Yeah, so it's from the very small to the very, okay. very, very big. Okay, very big. I think big, that's my problem. Mm. <laughs> but thank you so much. <laughs> thank you. I think we had a fantastic conversation. Yeah, thank you, yeah. Mary. Thank you, Diola. I've had a great conversation. What a way to wrap the weekend. Now, before we go, ensure you follow us across all our social media handles at Waste Your Africa. You can interact with us further, drop a comment, and most importantly, follow all our engagements on social media. Like, share, invite your families and friends to watch and follow the conversation. If you missed our quote for today, somebody ain't scrolling. Modern technology owes <laughs> owes ecology and apology. Okay, I saw you logic. Don't help me. We'll see you guys tomorrow at 8 p.m. Sorry. Sorry.